Now, look going into measure three and continuing into four and five. Get rid of measure two. When you hit the downbeat of measure three, lift your first and second fingers right on that downbeat. Just get off the strings. Lift like that. One and two come off. Play the open G. Then set the second finger, squeeze it in there on the F like that. Leave it there, leave everything down. Then measure four when you hit the down beat, lift the second finger off of the F, play the open G, and then reset the second finger onto E right when you need it. And then finally, you'll lift the little finger and land the first finger on the C. Now, this is very important. A lot of people going from measure two to three think they should slide the second finger as a guide finger, and then going to measure four, do the same thing, slide back to the E. A couple things wrong with that. Number one, you get the sound of that, and you hear that. Also, there's danger of getting a squeak and also it produces a lot of tension in the hand that we don't need so again what you want to do measure two to measure three on the downbeat lift one and two replace the second finger on the fourth string F leave it there and then downbeat to measure four lift the second finger reset it on the fourth string on the E and you're all set and then when you go on to measure five, you've got a C chord down at the end of measure four. Just leave it there and you're all set to play measure five. And on measure three, once again, we have um, potentially dissonant notes. What we can do is lift the little finger as we play the open E so we don't have that. And then we put the, when we put the little finger back down, we can put it down kind of sloppy, lean it over, and mute the open E so we have a clean sound. Like that. It works out very well. If you don't want to mess with it, that's fine. You're just going to have some dissonant notes. They do pass quickly though, so it's not awful. But if you want it really clean, that's what you would do, is do the uh, lift and the string damp like that. You can also damp that open E with the right hand when you play the D, the final D, set the A finger on the first string to damp, to damp it as you play the D. Here you can see the cutoff done with the right hand in measure three. Playing along, there's the open E that we want to damp. As I play the final chord there, the interval, the F and the D, I plant my A finger on the first string to damp it. Plant. And notice when I plant the finger on the string, I'm on the left side of my nail, flesh and nail together. Plant. And then I can just leave that A finger there because then it's ready in measure five to play the open E. That's why it's so important to, uh, on the string damp, to plant it on flesh and nail together on the left side of the nail so it's ready to be used again should the occasion arise. Plant, leave it, play, like that. And that similar technique can be used anywhere where you don't want to do a left hand damp. For instance, in measure five, same as measure one, instead of damping with the left hand, I could plant the A finger on the first string to damp the first, the open E. Like that. And then 
again here by planting on the left side of the nail flesh and nail together, I'm ready to play the high G that follows. <laughs> 